All right. This is sort of a, a timely area because our governor here in Florida has just vetoed what was the most comprehensive change in automobile liability insurance law in over 40 years. Uh, just by way of background, uh, in, the, in the 70s, as the concept of automobile no-fault insurance started to work its way across the country, Florida adopted uh, a system of no-fault insurance. Now, what we mean by no-fault insurance is that if you're involved in an accident, there will be benefits that are paid uh, regardless of whether you're at fault or not. And so that's why they call it no-fault. Uh, there are other aspects of the law that still involve filing suit in, uh, in court and seeking damages under what policies list as their bodily injury liability coverage. But the, the essence of no fault was to provide guaranteed payments, uh, which are personal injury protection benefits, we call them PIP benefits, to anyone, regardless of whether they are at fault in an accident or not. And it covers you if you're a pedestrian, covers you whether you're a passenger, covers, covers you whether you're a driver. Uh, the, the early laws uh, set a, uh, a dollar threshold for uh, being able to sue for uh, what we call non-economic damages, uh, which basically is pain and suffering, mental anguish, inability to lead a normal life, things of that nature. It uh, didn't last long. Uh, seems like everybody met the, uh, the dollar threshold and cases were still going to court. So they changed it. Uh, probably in the mid to late 70s. And they adopted what's called a verbal threshold, where in order to bring suit for those non-economic damages, you had to demonstrate uh, that you either had a permanent injury within a reasonable degree of medical probability, permanent disfigurement, per actually permanent significant disfigurement, loss of an, of an important bodily function, or death. Uh, in the absence of fitting into one of those categories, you were prohibited from suing for non-economic loss. And all you could collect were the benefits that were paid for by PIP. Uh, the PIP benefits basically were medical benefits, funeral benefits, uh, some wage benefits, and very limited. Uh, many states have much higher uh, PIP coverage. Florida, from the beginning, has only had a $10,000 uh, PIP limit. And that's been around since the 70s. So if you apply uh, just the, uh, you know, the economic growth factors to that, you can see that in today's dollars, $10,000 goes nowhere. Uh, so uh, the, the law has been around. Florida also does not re require that people keep bodily injury liability coverage, which is the insurance that uh, would provide coverage to the person that you may have hit if you're at fault. It also does not require that you have uninsured motorist coverage so that if an uninsured motorist were to strike you, you'd be covered for that too. Uh, you, it's required, but you have the ability to easily reject it simply by signing off on a form. It's all designed to keep insurance rates low, uh, although the, the effect really is to create a, a public, a motoring public in Florida that for the most part does not carry adequate financial responsibility. Uh, the kind of a, uh, an, an odd cottage industry uh, has sprung up over the course of the last 10 years or so uh, involving the collection of PIP benefits because the law also has a provision that you have to pay those PIP benefits within a finite period of time, very short period of time after demand. And if you don't, you can get a lawyer who can file suit for those PIP benefits. And even though the PIP benefits may be small, uh, the lawyer is allowed to ask for reasonable attorney's fees. And so the attorney fee bills wound up being far larger than the actual amount of the PIP benefits were, which were delayed by uh, you know, many insurance companies. So the, uh, it's gone back and forth this way for, for several years. It's been highly controversial. Uh, and this year, the legislature tried to address it by uh, getting rid of uh, the no-fault system, uh, by allowing uh, people to bring suit if they're injured, and by requiring uh, that everyone who's got a car uh, insure it for at least $25,000 in bodily injury liability coverage or $50,000 
uh, for, uh, for multiple incidents, what we would call a 2550 policy. Uh, the, both sides went back and forth. There were arguments by, uh, by consumer groups that this was going to drive up uh, the cost of uh, insurance in the state of Florida. Uh, there were arguments that no, in fact, it was going to bring down insurance rates because it was going to eliminate uh, the payment of automatic PIP benefits up to $10,000, which were always being claimed by, you know, not to disparage them, but you know, chiropractors seem to always be in line to, uh, to, to collect PIP payments. And, and over the years, ironically, there have been tweaks to the statute that have made it much more difficult for, uh, for chiropractors or osteopathic physicians or, or, or any general practitioners to uh, receive uh, payment for, uh, for these medical benefits that are provided in the accidents. So long story short, uh, the bill passed the legislature with uh, bipartisan support, which is very unusual in Florida, and landed on the governor's desk. And the governor, apparently under heavy pressure from uh, insurance lobbyists, uh, vetoed the bill. And the legislature has not attempted to overturn the veto. And so at this point, uh, we're back where we were before with a system of insurance in the state of Florida where you can drive around with no bodily injury liability insurance at all or with limits as low as $10,000. Uh, and your PIP benefits are still the, the $10,000. Um, and you can't bring suit for your non-economic damages unless you uh, cross one of those, those thresholds. Uh, it's uh, it, it's problematic because Florida has so many tourists that come in, rent cars, drive around, uh, and there are many, many automobile accidents where people go uncompensated because the financial responsibility laws in Florida are so lax. Uh, and what most people don't realize is that the most important coverage that you can have on your car is your uninsured motorist coverage because that's going to protect you from an uninsured motorist that may be responsible for an accident. Uh, unfortunately, uh, people are always looking to, uh, to reject uninsured motorist coverage because it lessens the cost of their insurance. Uh, and they wind up in circumstances where if they're in an accident, they are without any recourse uh, that is workable from a financial standpoint. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's a significant problem. Uh, for the motoring public. Uh, most other states, as I mentioned earlier, have much higher limits uh, in their, uh, their PIP coverage uh, and also higher limits in the amount of bodily injury liability coverage that they mandate. Now, there's kind of an interesting spinoff that comes from this as well, which is that it used to be in Florida, if you had a rental car and you were involved in an accident, the rental car company was uh, the ultimate source of liability, the ultimate source of compensation. Uh, through federal uh, legislation that's known as the Graves Amendment, uh, there were severe limits that were put on the exposure of uh, insurance companies, uh, not rental car companies, rather, uh, to, uh, to their exposure uh, if uh, the person who they rented to, if their renter is involved in an accident. And it's limited to the financial, the mandatory financial responsibility of a particular state. So, of course, in Florida, uh, since your limit of financial responsibility that you're mandated to have, if you carry it at all, is only $10,000. Uh, your Hertz's, your Avis's, your Enterprise's, your budgets, uh, their exposure for ownership on the vehicle is limited to $10,000 under the vast majority of circumstances. So again, another source of financial responsibility in automobile accidents uh, had, you know, was removed. And again, you know, Florida's financial responsibility laws in, uh, for the motoring public are very lax. Uh, they may as well not exist at all uh, unless you're lucky enough to be struck by someone who's carrying a high level of insurance uh, or uh, it's you know, a corporate vehicle. Uh, you know, just as an aside, if you have a leased vehicle, then there is a mandated uh, $100,000 bodily injury liability limit that you have to carry. Uh, but 
if you don't lease the vehicle, then you don't have to carry it. And we're back, you know, at stage one uh, that we talked about, you know, earlier in this, this conversation. So it's kind of a, uh, a miserable state of financial affairs if you're involved in an auto case. And, you know, that's where we are. And, uh, you know, it's between the, uh, the politics of, uh, of insurance and law, um, you know, the interests of the public, the greater good uh, is largely being ignored and people go uncompensated for accidents, whether they were their fault or not, whether their injuries are significant or insignificant. It's just kind of a bad situation for everyone all around. <laughs>